congratulations to the 29th anniversary of the uh, Church last Sunday. And I asked Pastor Numa, how's the celebration? And he said, number one, okay. Do you have a frozen lechon paxe uh, for me? So I said, uh, I'm going to the Philippines, okay. <laughs> anyway, we have a wonderful lechon last night, so I didn't miss something. Praise the Lord. Anyway, we praise the Lord, and you know, last February 1, Alpha and I drove to uh, Alice Springs from Darwin to Mataranka to see Nix, Kalim Lim, and she's enjoying the nursing work there. And it's really a very challenging work for next day. But then from Tennant Creek to uh, Alice, the road was flooded. So for the first time in my life, I think we were scared because we were dri driving to a lake. About seven uh, roads were flooded. And so please pray for the safety. And then we thank God that we arrived yesterday, uh, last Thursday, because it started to flood as well in Catherine. So Catherine to Darwin might be a big challenge to people are traveling, so we'll appreciate your prayers. Now, one big prayer um, points that I'd like to share with you is the prayer gathering at the park in Isle Springs every Sunday at 5 p.m. We attended two Sundays. Our first Sunday was very challenging because there was a drunk woman who was cursing the meeting and, and swearing and cursing and, oh, and then another man joined, and so it became very chaotic, you know. I said, oh, wow, this is a gathering. But the other Sunday was better because it was a little bit organized and people are listening. And it's amazing because it was led by the Aboriginal woman, and the Aboriginal people are uh, providing the ministry to the non-Aboriginal people there. So it's amazing. And so um, let's pray for us as we support this ministry and continue to learn from that. So we'll appreciate your prayers. And of course, uh, we praise the Lord that Paul and Nicola and the family are still in Vanuatu and they have finished the uh, cultural orientation. Let's pray for them. They will be back in Australia on the uh, 9th of March. So we'll, we'll appreciate your prayers for them. Okay, now uh, we go to the message. And so I'd like you to think about a vision for Alice Springs. As you know, there's a big, big social problems. And, and the good news is, Nix in Mataranka, it was included in the um, dry, no alcohol. It was very quiet, no crime, no uh, untoward incident. So the um, policy is working. Again, hopefully it will continue to work. So. Uh, but we'd like, to, we'd like to ask you to pray that other things will become a heart of hope and change in Central Australia. As you know, the statement of the heart was um, born in the Oluru, especially uh, thinking about Ayers Rock, about the heart of Australia. The heart of Australia, in a sense, is uh, in big uh, social problems. So um, we're thinking about that. And so will you pray for that as well, to include us, Alpha and I. We'll be staying here until May, and the Lord willing, in June, or um, in, in May or June, we'll going to drive back to Alice Spring. So please pray for that. All right, the message today is about being near and one with God. This part of the uh, series that I was studying while I was still in the uh, last year of the pandemic, and I was reflecting about the boundless riches of Christ. Especially I look at the riches of the world, the riches in Gold Coast and many other places. And the people there are, um, you know, as they continue to live lives, as if there is no God. Everything is about material things. They have all the Australian dream, house, cars, jobs, and money. But is that really all life? Is that really what it means to live? See, when I look at the scriptures, I think a lot of people are missing the boundless riches of Christ. That every day I praise God that I'm a child of God, that I belong to Christ. Are you? Na tayo ay mapalad. We are blessed in Christ. So I look at Ephesians chapter 2 and chapter 3, but I started from Ephesians chapter 3 when I look at the word, the boundless riches of Christ in chapter 3. 
So we're going to hopefully, I'll be able to finish that until chapter 3 at the end of March, as I'll be preaching, in, uh, except one Sunday, I think, in March, about the boundless riches of Christ. So we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2, 11 to 13. And on Sunday, next Sunday, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 to 18. So if you have your Bibles with you, we're going to look at that. Now, what do you think is the greatest separation in human existence? Now, if you look at the history of Australia, we have what we call the stolen generation. About 17,000 children were taken away from their families, hoping that they will be transformed to live like the uh, white people in Australia. Of course, pardon the word white, but that is the intention, that they will assimilate the culture of English culture. But we know that causes a lot of problems. And of course, to some extent, there were good results, but generally, the stolen generation are still suffering from the trauma and the children and the generation that has come. And in Darwin, of course, we know that. Of course, the global refugees as well, about 90 million, maybe more than 100 million now, especially in addition to Ukraine, about 7 million have to leave the country because of the war. And the Holocaust, of course, six millions. And the Jews were scattered all over the globe. But then we know the consequence of the uh, Holocaust because we know it's part of the... Uh, uh, sometimes, is it the act of God for the Israelites because they have violated the covenant with God? God had chosen them to bless them, love them, Perform the wonders of God, the miracles of God when they were in Egypt. They were slaves in Egypt. But God rescued them and loved them and showered them with blessings. And of course, God dwells in them through the temple. So that's the, um, in a sense, the background of the Holocaust and a long journey for them. But look at the greatest separation is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. Paul writes to the Ephesian Christians who are still a minority in the city of Ephesus. And they are facing, of course, persecutions there. And Paul writes here, he said, Remember that at the time you were separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. So the greatest separation is not social separation, but being separated from Christ. What does it mean? So in the language of the apostles, he used some important words, excluded. Hindi ka kasama. They want to be excluded from, you know, I met people nagtampo or they have a little bit of resentment because they were not invited either to a party or to the wedding, you know, or to the special, you know, special celebration. I know it's not easy. I mean, look, look, from us too because we were new, you know, as you know, we were in MCF for 18 years. And there was some, a lot of celebration when we were new. Oh, there was a party, we were not invited. I said, oh, that's culture, you know. So we have a little bit of understanding. We uh, start to overcome this feeling of being excluded. And I tell you that we'll come to you from time to time. So uh, don't feel bad, you know. That's, sometimes it happens. But the idea of exclusion from citizenship in Israel is a very, very big concept, big issue among the Gentiles. Because on part, the Israelites failed to show the love of God to them. But we know that from the experience, the history in the Mediterranean area, they know when the presence of God was there, the story of the story of Jericho, the story of David, the story of Solomon, and how 
this tiny nation have conquered 33 nations. Just imagine. Without military training, they were slaves in Egypt, and yet they have conquered 33 nations as God promised. And the wonders of God when they were traveling, imagine you're traveling during the day, there was a covering of the cloud. When they were traveling during the night, there was the fire, the wall of fire guiding them. The presence of God. I don't know about you, but this is very, very significant. That they were excluded from citizenship in Israel because, in a sense, they rejected. Like Jericho, only the family of Rahab was spared because they participated in the faith, in the covenant. They decided to be a part of the blessings of Israel. And of course, foreigners to the covenant, the covenant of God of blessing and promise and prosperity and peace and safety. The covenants of God. Of course, the highest covenant was the covenant of the Messiah. That they will be part of the King of Kings. That Jesus Christ is coming. The promise. The promise of, of eternal kingdom. Of course, we know that the eternal kingdom is Rule is ruling in our hearts today, but the eternal kingdom is coming. Jesus is coming as the king of kings. And we are part of that kingdom. But there are two words there that are also very significant without hope. Can you see that? Walang pag-asa without hope and without God. I don't know if you have experienced people who have no hope. Many people survive in the Holocaust because of this word, hope. Hope. And we know people who have no hope decided to uh, end their lives by suicide. And that's very unfortunate. They need a lot of uh, understanding and listening immediately. You know, suicide is the people who are thinking about suicide. is like a massive heart attack. You have to think. You have to act and you have to show concern, people like that. But the other one is without God in the world. Imagine without God in life. If you think about it, if there is no God in the universe, we will all die. If there is no God in this world, life will end in this world. Because life comes from God. But nevertheless, God is so merciful to us. Amen? Now, the good news, of course, is this. But now, he said, today, but now, in your life, in your existence, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. You are no longer far away. Another terminology for separation from God. Far away from the favors of God, far away from the love of God, far away from your prayers. God will not listen. Of course, God is merciful. He listens to sincere hearts. But it is through the blood of Christ. Take note, the blood of Christ. The suffering of Christ. So what life, if you look at in, in, in contrast, the past is life without Christ. It's just natural. It is a life separated from God. But now in life in Christ, you have the supernatural. The Holy Spirit comes into you. You have, you have been born again. You are living the Spirit. It is not just natural. That's why it's so hard to change people. Their personality. Ganito na ako eh. I'm like this. But that is the natural. But the supernatural is God can change you. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. God is doing something new in your life. So it is beyond the naturals. That's why it is a supernatural life. The spirit-filled life. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit will come to you. The fruit of love, joy, and peace and others. So you have no reason to say, I'm, I'm always like this. Talagang matampuhin ako. 
But I tell you, God can change you. The Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, truth to consider now as we go quickly, and especially as we uh, ap approach the Passion Week. No, in uh, I think last Sunday was the uh, uh, last Wednesday was the Ask Wednesday, and there was a our Catholic friends are uh, showing the uh, spirit of repentance. And hopefully that's really true. But you know, it's more than a ritual. It's more than putting asses on your forehead. It is about the heart, heart that should be repenting. The first one is what we call the divine solution. In some friends, we call this the divine exchange. That Jesus exchanged his life for you, for your salvation, for your forgiveness, for your pardon. So only Christ can bring us back to God and to one another through his blood. Of course, you know, the biggest separation, God and us were separated. But Jesus came into our world to bring us back to God. Amen? But there was a social and religious cultural separation between Jews and Gentiles. But Jesus was breaking this. And Jesus is saying, the gospel transformed culture. The gospel is above culture. Because God is perfect in all his ways. So if you look at the, uh, our humanity problem in general, according to the moral law, we are guilty. According to the law of conscience, people who have no Ten Commandments, they are still guilty. Or the law of goodness, we know it is good. We are guilty. So if you look at James chapter 2 verse 10, especially our SDA Seventh day Adventists, they love this. But they are missing the perfection in Christ. Whoever keeps the whole law and just stumble at one point is guilty of breaking all of it. Even though they do not have the law, meaning the Gentiles, since they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences are also bearing witness and their thoughts accuse them. People have not in the commandments in, in Amazon jungles. There you have conscience. God put the moral law in the hearts, in the minds. We know something is wrong in their hearts and minds, but they still do it, so they are guilty. But of course, the law of goodness. James chapter 4, verse 17. Anyone, according to the Apostle James, who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Now, worship is good. Prayer is good. Helping people is good. And many other things. But if you don't do it, it is sin. Now, according to the uh, Apostle Paul, whether you are guilty of the moral law, the conscience, according to the law of goodness, Romans chapter 2, verse 6 and 16 says, there is a final judgment whether you are only governed by the conscience. He said, God will give to each person according to to what he has done. And then verse 16, this will take place on the day when God will judge men's secrets through Jesus Christ as the gospel declares. So the final judgment is not about whether you are obeying the moral law, or the conscience of goodness, but it will be through Jesus Christ. The final judgment is whether you have responded to the gospel. To Christ. That's why we need to uh, follow what Jesus said. As the Father sent me, I also sent you. You know, as you know, living in Darwin is a very comfortable place. 18 years of ministry with MCF. We have a wonderful life. We have a great ministry and we, we miss a lot of you. But it's not about me just missing you all. It's about obeying God. That is what we're doing. We'd like to obey what God wants us to do. But we, we love to be with you as well. You know, we miss you. And uh, of course, do you miss us? It's okay if not. Now, this is the declaration. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the, the mandate of Christ for us to share the gospel to people. 
they will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out, meaning separation as well. So the, the scripture are using a lot of words, shut out from the presence of the Lord. The apostle Paul said to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. If we are going to die, don't worry because we are going to enjoy the presence of God and from the majesty of his power. Imagine to be separated from the presence of the Lord and the majesty of his power. It's like when we were, in, we were driving. I need to call somebody, but there was no signal. There was no cell site. And it's good when we arrived in Mataranka, Nix had a, had a Wi-Fi uh, something, you know? So we were able to email something. So it's good. So we're able to contact our families. We're able to contact people that we need to do. How much more when you're separated from God forever? Like me, when I went to Seoul, Korea for the Asian Missions Congress, there was a beautiful ceremony there between the Japanese pastors and the Korean pastors. They decided to forgive one another and embrace each other in Christ. That's beautiful. After two weeks, I came home. I tell you, Ralph was a little bit hesitant to come to me. I said, I was away only for two weeks, but the children have us as if I'm like, like a stranger. So I learned a lesson from that. People who work in Saudi Arabia, you know, in Hong Kong, when I was a pastor in Manila for 13 years. So a lot of people went to Saudi Arabia, sometimes five years, six years. Hong Kong, Singapore. And they came back, and they were like strangers in their own family. So I suggested to a lot of men or mothers, Try to court again your children, you know. Try to win them again slowly. Because when they come home, they can see all the weaknesses of their children. And they, they complain, they uh, correct, and they uh, grumble. I said, no, you will. It's like pushing away your children. Try to learn from them and win their hearts. And so they are so happy. Because, you know, five years to catch up, they were away for five years. They were away for two years. Sometimes... You know, like Alpha said, there was a mother in, uh, where is that, in Brunei, Singapore. And she just arrived in Singapore, and the milk was dripping. She just left her, her son in the Philippines. She has to work. She has to go back to Singapore. It's so hard, and I tell you, our hearts are crying. They were separated. Separated from their husbands, separated from their young baby. It's so hard. And I tell you that family is important. I tell you that being with your children, grandchildren, with church, with friends, but how much more being near with God? That intimacy with God. That you are in the presence of God. Amen? Amen. So only Christ can make us perfect, according to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14, by his sacrifice. He has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Imagine, when you approach God, you don't need to sacrifice. You need to, to perform something for God, to please God. You are perfect in Christ. You have been accepted and loved by God. Amen? So in the second thing that I'd like to emphasize, by faith in Christ, we will enjoy the blessings promised by God. Citizenship, covenants, hope, and God's favor, according to verse 11 and 12. So if you look at the uh, John chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, from the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the lowest given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Then Romans chapter 5, verse 17, from the historical event in the life of, you know, we were dead with Adam, we have sinned with Adam, we inherited the sinfulness of Adam, but something wonderful in Christ. He said, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more 
will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So who is reigning your heart? Who is reigning your life? For some people, worry, according to the music team, sometimes rains. Sometimes people allow drugs to rain their hearts. Sometimes pride, work, money. What is reigning your heart? Is Jesus Christ reigning your life? Is the grace of God reigning your life? What is reigning your heart as a Christian? I hope it's not work, it's not other things, it's not money, but you allow the grace of God. So in closing, let me ask you these two questions. Where are you now in your relationship with Christ? What is reigning in your life? Let us pray. Lord, thank you again for um, reminding us who we are in you about the boundless riches we have in you. Thank you, Jesus, that as we continue to love you and serve you, we'll experience what it means to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen.